the teapots that that they reference in the in the video do you guys mm -hmm. sell those yeah um is it this one right this one you saw oh yeah that's the one that i saw yeah yeah yes we we do sell them this is the uh the teapot that you get this is the the size you can see and okay. it is actually handmade oh really as you can see this has a finer mesh filter here and this yeah. is the red clay that i'm talking about in the oh okay i thought that was interesting when in the in the video seeing that that mesh being bigger in the teapot i i have one teapot that has a, a mesh strainer but it's it it, it kind of looks like a little cup that you just drop into the teapot yep but mm -hmm. it's kind of small yep and 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 it's it's kind of like a blind spot that you know the tea leaf doesn't open up if it's a little bit so this gives you the uh, gives the tea leaf the enough space to open up and all that's uh, that's main reason for it and yeah the mesh is also good because you know it doesn't it filters it very well as well and uh, you, you already watched the video so you know but the yeah the clay is the um really the uh, differentiation in japan it's actually pretty popular it has been popular historically um uh, but it's not too um well known in outside of japan so that's okay how this looks. and we have two types i don't know if you notice it um this is just the uh, we have two types. this is another one it looks a little more modern but that it's even it is actually the same tokonamic clay pot, even if it looks um, different. And this one has the, you know, the one that you can detach and it's easier to clean. Right. Yeah. So that's that's the difference between the two, and this is the size. So. Does the handle get really hot? Nope. That's the reason why there is a handle. You hold like that. And then you usually hold and then pour. So okay. It does not get hot. This part gets hot. Like that. Yeah, my my regular teapot that I just use for black teas and and such, uh, you know, because it has that curved handle because it's a standard teapot. Mm -hmm. uh, some sometimes my uh, my knuckles will hit the teapot and <laughs> it's kind of hot. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that the traditional you know me. This is called you know me. Usually has this because of the the purpose is you know, to keep the hand hand um, cool. Does the does the clay retain the heat better? Um, not really. Um, that's that's why it it gets hot. It's emitting the heat, so mm. um, it does not. But usually it's Japanese tea, you steep it about one minute or so. So within that one minute, it does not get um, too cool, too cool, right? It's because it's only one minute. And um, the best way to do the tea is um, boil the water all the way to 100 degrees Celsius or boiling point. And then you cool it down to about 85 degree. And that technique is called yuzamashi. And what it does is that, first of all, by boiling the tea, it removes the, uh, the chemical component of like, like chloride and stuff. And then by cooling that down to about 75 degrees, um, 75 to 85 degrees is uh, the best temperature for Japanese, most of the Japanese tea. And that is uh, how the actual tea is being served in, for instance, the a tea ceremony and so forth. And that time to wait is kind of like a meditation time as well. It works. Yeah. Out. So uh, there is a history about that as well. But it's okay for the teapot to emit the heat. But you don't want to be keeping it for long because, um, you know, especially Japanese tea, uh, it gets pretty bitter if you keep it for like more than five minutes. So good to know. Yeah, I've uh, I I have accidentally left. Uh, black tea and and because uh, I got distracted and then the next thing you know I, I realized oh it's been in there a little too long and that was, yep. it didn't taste good at all <laughs> yes the exception to that is a cold brewing 
is um, if you put the water in a tea, like, um, let's see, this is from Hario. I don't know if you've seen this. Um, this one, we do not sell them on our store, but it's, it's all over. And it has a, you know, the filter on the back. Oh, okay. And, and, and you can do it with a regular jar as well, but you put the cold water and you put the tea probably about this much and leave it overnight. That makes a really good cold brewing uh, green tea. And for that, it, because it's cold, it doesn't get bitter and it actually tastes very good. So you might want to try uh, cold brewing. Oh, I love that idea because I, I love, um, well, I love green tea hot, but I also love it cold too. I actually find it, uh, find it refreshing and I drink more mm -hmm. uh, when I have the cold green tea. So some, sometimes when I'm, when I'm working, I don't always think to drink water because, because I get involved in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when I start getting dehydrated, I realize that when I drink the, the cold green tea, um, I'm better about drinking it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, even if you don't have it, all you have to do is just, you know, filter out with a mesh and when you drink it. So you don't need a special equipment. And overnight tends to be about the right timing. So you put it at night and in the morning you have a nice fresh uh, cold brewing tea. So something that size, if you put the tea, tea in it and then put the water over top and basically put it in the refrigerator, you be, you're filling that whole thing up, right? Yep. Water all the way here and about this much uh, green tea. And okay. on our blog, I have a very specific instruction. Uh, there is a, a measurement, probably about this much to this much. Okay. Okay, good. Good. Excellent. Oh, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. 